This is actually dangerous. We have a super busy day today. We are off to that job where someone else installed the zappy and I had to do a replacement on it. And let's see if we get a cup of tea this time. First job of the day is to replace that consumer unit that was put inside the meter box by someone else. So what we have is this little consumer unit, main switch type thing. And they want to get a smart meter installed and there's clearly not enough room so it was refused last time. So we're gonna remove this install a new consumer unit outside the meter box but the trouble with this sort of job is i'm limited to where i can put this consumer unit i don't know whether i can put it this side or this side this side ideally but i'm limited by the length of this cable so job number one is i think i'm gonna get all this disconnected i can safely isolate it here turn this off rip this out get these cables out disconnect this from the handy block then i get my customers power back on they can live their life while i do all the prep for the next bit and it does look like i'm getting a cup of tea so it's a good job I brought one with me. So that took literally about two minutes just to whip these towers out. Now this is completely isolated. They've got their power back on and I can get this ripped out safely. So what I'm up to is I've got my outside consumer unit mounted here, Copex, and I've got the high tough secure in there. Then in the meter box, I've put a little whisker box here joining up those CT connections, but I made a bit of an error. The 16 mil tails I'm installing, I measured them a bit short. So luckily though, big shout out to Stuart at Rexall Fairham. He's the manager there, absolute legend. He's just come straight out to drop me some more tails out, so that's great. And he's brought me a little survival kit. Got me a bottle of water and some biscuits. Absolute legend. Well, I'm basically all done on job number one. I've already got my client on the next job phoning me up, asking when I'm gonna get there, even though I'm not due there till 11 and it's now half nine. But he's moving house and he's keen obviously to move. But anyway, so what we have here is a new consumer unit with a surge protection, type ARCD, and we've just got that consuming it out of here. That's tidied up. You know, when the meter guys come, change this meter, they can move this 100 amp isolator down and make some room. So this is now ready to go for the new smart meter. So that's brilliant. I better get a move on. Okay, we have arrived at the job where we need to disconnect and remove this Tesla charger here. And this is an absolute classic example of people carrying out these installations that don't know what they're doing. So that is connected into this consumer unit, which has a type ACRCD, and it's just on an MCB. No pen fault protection, no type A RCD protection, and this was only installed a year ago. So I don't know who these people are who are installing these, but it's absolutely wrong. And if you're getting a charger installed for super cheap, this is why, because this is actually dangerous. Right, so let's get this ripped out, and then I am gonna be reinstalling this Saturday morning in a couple of days at the new property, and I'll show you how to do it properly. So I've got the Tesla charger removed now. All I've done is stick a whisker box there. Then there's an outside supply ready for anyone else who needs it. Tesla's in the original box, and now I'm off to install a Hypervolt. It is like two o'clock now, and I'm just about to start another EV charging install. I'm pushing for time again, because I need to do some site site visits after this so what i'm going to do is just get this cracked out and show you what i've done it is 10 to 4 and i've done pretty well to be honest i'll show you where we are up to so inside the house i've installed another fuse box consumer unit of a main switch surge and a 40 amp type a double power rcd EV Ultra's filled up, CT connections joined there, CT installed there, and then EV Ultra goes into this cavity. They do have a metal fire rated enclosure here, and if you're wondering why I haven't used this, there's loads of reasons why. First of all, when I do quiet, I always give the option of having a separate consumer unit, so if there's any issues with the house, if it's on a split load board, then they're still going to be able to charge their car. And that's exactly the case here. So we have a split load board, but we only have one spare way, which means I don't have the capacity for the surge protection also. And we have type AC RCD. To be honest, by the time you spent the money replacing the RCD, shuffling bits about, you might as well have just bought the separate consumer unit. And if you do have any issues with your house installation, it's not going to affect your EV charger at all. Anyway, so outside, the cable goes through the wall. I had to be careful not to hit the waste pipe. And then we have the hypervolt charger here. We've got a 10 meter 
heated cable today. CT connections made there, EB Ultra failed there, ready for testing and connecting. One thing I thought you might find interesting was I had another inquiry today and it was for two EV chargers. So there's two people and they're swapping houses, they're moving house and they're literally swapping and they want me to swap both their chargers over as well. And I thought this was a bit strange because they're both type two chargers, but it turns out that one of them leases the charger through their work. Now that is problematic because they're not allowed to leave it behind. They have to take it with them. So this is going to be interesting. I'm going to do a video on this job, how it all works out, swapping the charges over. And I'm going to find out about this whole leasing thing because I imagine it probably sounded like a good deal initially, but sounds like there's a few problems with it, if I'm honest. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want me to see me reinstall that Tesla charger, subscribe. I'm doing that on Saturday and it's going to be interesting because it's actually a dumb charger. So it hasn't got any smart features. So I can talk all about that and explain to you why I still can install that even though it's not smart. Right, I'm going to get this testing done and then I've got a couple of site visits to do. So I've gone today for my first client, not making me a cup of tea. Unbelievable. Again, in my new client, I've had teas and look what else I've got. Homemade Victoria sponge. Okay, it's 10 past five. I'm finished, all tested, packed away. And this is the finished hypervolt installation. One thing to bear in mind is this is a 10 meter lead. So I get asked a lot about how a 10 meter lead looks around a hypervolt. And it's not bad, you know, there's quite a lot of cable, but it tidies up. But one thing to be aware of is that when you wrap it around, the whole stuff falls really high up the wall. And that happens on both sides, no matter which way you, you coil it up. It lands better on a five meter. When you're doing this, you know, bear in mind that that is gonna fall. The holster is quite high. And I think my client will end up probably getting an aftermarket sort of cover. And leaving it like that, which I get, it looks fine like that. <sighs> so I'm gonna leave it there today. I've got some site visits to do. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, subscribe to my channel. I've got some good stuff coming up. I've got the Tesla job coming up. That'd be a good one. And I'll do a full comparison on how it was installed before and how it should be installed. Um, so yeah, see you on the next one.